we have. Um, when but I you've say, still got an increasing budget. You've cut, yes, but the budget's still increasing. Yes, because as I said, increasing. if 80, 85 percent of the budget has to increase, not through our fault, then to find savings in the remaining 15 percent to counterbalance is mathematically impossible, really. But that's uh, unless, the unless you just stop the administration. You, you say the, the rest of it sort of has to increase, as though this is some some law of nature, something over which you have no control. If you look at these non-discretionary parts, agriculture, foreign aid and so on, they, of all the bits of the budget, are the most, uh, the most obviously and palpably failing in terms of, of boosting growth. Uh, European agriculture, whatever it is, is not the motor of the European economy. And I would argue that the reason for that is precisely because it's become dependent on government handouts rather than on innovation, just like anything else. The same of, uh, uh, of the social and regional programmes and so on. So it's actually, th this money is not... Uh, is not useless, it's worse than useless. If a country starts to arrange its affairs around the receipt of subventions from outside, then the best and brightest graduates every year start drifting into jobs in the commission or in the national bureaucracy instead of making things or selling things or working in the private sector. That's the tragedy of the countries like Greece which have become so dependent on EU uh, handouts. That's why they're in the mess they're in. That's why they've been overtaken by a number of the, the new democracies. I, I hear you, Dan, but I think again that you're shooting at the messenger. The, the point of the annual budget is not to change the rules. I think this is a debate about the annual budget. If, and if this is democracy, I'm really happy to discuss about handouts to farmers or not, but in a debate about the annual budget, it's actually, I think, pretty unfair to introduce elements that need unanimity by 27 member states to change the rules. We as a commission, we cannot change the rules. If member states agree that farmers should actually receive subsidies, which, by the way, means that it's member states don't have to pay them, it's, if you want. If member states agree at unanimity that we're going to create an external action service, and let me remind you that they went even one step further, they said, and the cost of this external service should be compensated by savings at home. Now, I don't think they make their savings, but really, it's not for the Commission, the commission to change the rules. The Commission neutral in these things, Petrito. You were arguing I mean, not you personally. The Commission was arguing for all of these expansions of EU jurisdiction. So you can't now turn around and say we're being just told what to do. I mean, the, the oh, Commission, the commission doesn't this decide. Has been, but this has been called, I mean, we quoted, uh, you know, President Barroso mm -hmm. uh, talking about this being a budget for growth. Absolutely. Mr Lewandowski talking about this as an anti-crisis package. Um, others talking about we need more Europe. We've heard all this. So mm -hmm. this is accompanied by a definite sort of ideological oh, underpinning. You can have opinions, it isn't certainly. just sort of doing what you're told no, to do. No, you, you can have opinions. So but can you who argue? Decides? I mean, who can decides? you counter that point? It's not the Commission. Point? The Commission is, is a civil service. We can propose definitely. Yes, and we, we argued in favour of an external action service. And we also argued in favour of an external action service whose cost would be actually offset by savings in member states. Mm -hmm. But who in the end agrees? You then, as an MEP, the British government. We can only propose as any civil service in the world. We have our opinions. Of course, we fight for an idea of Europe. We think that, and facts often back us up, that one euro spent at EU level, in many cases, can bring savings of 14, 15 euros. Oh, come on. Patrick. Absolutely, Dan. I mean, that, that, we have facts just, about yeah, this. Right. We have the facts in every science and research. Study, every study mm -hmm. of this shows that the closer you get to the people on the ground, the smaller the unit, the more efficient the spending is. Local councils are more efficient than regional, regional than national, national than European. And for, for very obvious reasons. I don't think it works. It's as simple. I'm sure in certain cases it is. I've worked for local and regional authorities in Europe for many, many years, and I, I really know what you mean about this in some cases, but it can never be But this is 100%. such a wonderfully <laughs> self-serving argument. That, and, and it's one... I mean, you're, I, I realise you're, you're quoting uh, José Manuel Barroso and others that, you know, a euro spent at European level goes further. I mean, can you not see what an incredible incredibly convenient that argument is from his point of view. The more you give us, the better off you are. You but what is, uh, what is his advantage in it? What, what's in it for him? It doesn't change anything. An institutional aggrandizement. One, one of the other, of the of the other issues that's brought up, um, we talk about, I mean, Dan's been talking about the effectiveness mm. or not of that euro spent, but there is undoubtedly still a huge problem with waste. And the Court of Auditors have come across that year after year, particularly in the one area which is growing more than any other, which is that area of uh, sustainable growth, cohesion, money. How can you justify putting forward an increase when there is still far too much money just wasted, not accounted for properly? You know what the criteria of the Court of Auditors are to sign off um, our, our accounts. They want a 98% success rate in all payments. That's it. 
If you reach 98% success rate, they'll sign them off. Unfortunately, the Commission usually gets a 95-96% success rate. Therefore, and it's right enough, these are the rules. The Court of Auditors says, sorry, we can't sign them off. However, I would be interested to know if any private or public body with uh, operations in, in many countries were to reach a 96% yes, success rate. But this just proves the point I was making before. The problem is precisely the size and the remoteness and the supranational nature of these organizations. The smaller they are, the more efficient they are. And the, you know, the, the problem is not that the EU attracts bad people. I mean, of course, it attracts some bad people, like any other it's organization. Universal. Man, is, man is fallen. But the reason why we have these particular financial problems, this, the, the accounts not being signed off and so on, is that it's not really in anybody's interest to police the system. If you have a suspicion that an olive grower in your part of the world is getting subsidies for something that he isn't really growing, why should you bother when it's Brussels money coming into the area? And so that you, you've got this fundamental problem that nobody, Brussels is fondly signing the cheques, imagining that it's making itself more popular. Everyone else is happily arranging their affairs around qualifying with, for the subventions. Nobody really has a countervailing incentive on the other side to reduce spending. Do you think that's no. true? No, but a... I was just, I'm just glad that you don't challenge the fact that 95 to 96 percent of our payments are actually spotless, which is pr a pretty decent score. Well, how about your to... accounting system? They're not saying that the pay they're, they're, they're not talking about where the money is going. They're not, they're the, not the, saying the that 96 percent no, no, of the money is that the gone payments to where it's are made according to the rules. Yeah. Which is now, not the same as saying a, that it's gone to the point. right place. The second point is that, as you know, especially for cohesion policy, the EU institutions don't run the show. Member states do. If you needed, actually, EU staff to go and check, as you were saying, it's, it's a good example, the olive grower everywhere, you would be screaming at the of increase course. of administration. So I would not have the subsidy last, in the first place. Last point I would like to make is that uh, in 2010, the Commission made a proposal to the Council and the Parliament to actually improve financial regulation. And there was a, an interesting little point in which we said we would like member states every year to send us like a statement saying that they have checked that everything is done accordingly because we take the blame for things that you, member states, do, including Britain. In, in many cases, the uh, UK equivalent of the Court of Auditors has slammed local, regional and national authorities in Britain for misuse of EU funds. And what has been the answer of member states? No. Exactly. No, nothing. And that's the point, years. isn't it? Isn't this another example of where uh, you talk about Brussels doing this and the Commission doing this, whereas actually the problem is lying with member states. Back to this uh, annual budget issue, the fact is that member states, like Britain, wants a nuclear fusion programme, which costs whatever it is, millions and millions of billions. euros. Uh, they won't let uh, the Commission or the Parliament cut that down, but they don't want something else. This is about member states demanding uh, spending on their is, pet projects there is not and not on others. a single thing that is backed by EU money that could not be more efficiently done at national level. What's happening is that we're circulating gazillions of pounds, 19 billion, something like that, in, in 2011. You know, three times what we've saved in all our domestic spending cuts put together through the leaky chambers, chambers and, and tubes of the Brussels machinery dribbling out all the way, and then a little bit of it comes back, and we're supposed to be grateful for it, which is, which is crazy. Let me, let me suggest the, little, the following little thought experiment. What if... I and Patrizio and all of these institutions cease to exist tomorrow. Right? What if the whole of the, uh, the Commission, Parliament and the rest of the EU's agencies weren't there? How many people would really notice? Other than the armies of contractors and consultants who are learning, who have learned how to get a, a very handy living out of it, who would really feel a deleterious impact on their quality well, of life? Probably hundreds, a few hundreds of millions of people in Central and Eastern Europe first, because they depend on us to have their, their roads and railway uh, upgraded after themselves. 40 years. They, they can... haven't got their money. As I said, they rely on, 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 on you, on you, Britain, you France, just, you Germany. You conceded earlier. So finish, let, 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 let him yeah, finish. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's good when we can just talk to each other without interrupting each other. Secondly, probably you would find that um, the uh, safety of our food, air transport, maritime transport would go down because for the moment we have rules for 27 countries. It's the same rule. No one can access our national waters as European or British or whatever without uh, respecting some of the rules. You take this away, you would find that one country one day will just sort of be a bit more lenient in terms of safety and all that. And I think you'll find, I can go on like a scientist, you have scientists in many universities across Europe collaborating 
through EU funds against research against cancer, tuberculosis and others. Of course, then, sorry, but it's better to build one bridge with 27 people chipping in it than everybody building no, their own little bridge. It's not better to build bridge. one bridge directed by the European Commission. If that were better, then the Soviet Union would have won the Cold War and we'd be talking in Russian now. The idea that collaboration cannot happen unless you are in charge of it is the root of the, the whole European heresy. Who, who's in charge? Countries, the countries, countries will come together, institutions will come together, universities, in your example, will come together and collaborate as they have been Do you been not accept, we've got to wind it up, but... Without needing the European Commission to tell them Do you not do. accept, though, Dan, I mean, this is not a case, actually, and since the Lisbon Treaty, which I know you oppose, uh, uh, even more not the case, uh, that the Commission uh, dictates the budget, this is decided by you, your colleagues here at the European Parliament, and by the Council of Ministers in the end, isn't it? Uh, uh, certainly the... The MEPs have a say, and obviously I'm in the minority here because the European Parliament tends to draw on self-selecting uh, Euro integrationists who are the people who put themselves up for election in the first place. But you know, if you if you were to have a referendum in almost any member country at the moment and say, do you think the European budget should be bigger or smaller? I'd be pretty confident of the results. And just briefly, Peter. yeah, of, of course, if you have a referendum asking people should you pay more or less on anything, everybody will say no on your fees for your gym club, of course. But once you know what it does, what it can do, uh -huh. I think then people can change their Well, minds. there is your job for the next few months uh, and a message uh, that no doubt you'll be pushing hard to spin. Thanks very much, both of you. And that's all from me and my guests here at uh, the European Parliament studio in Brussels. We'll be back again next week, uh, making sense of the results in the French election and what that might mean for the rest of Europe. But until then, bye.